I'm Betty Politan. Great to have you with us tonight here on Closing Arguments. It was last year, you know, at this time that we were all in the midst of the Alec Murdoch trial. You know, I took a couple trips down to the Low Country, uh, digging into that testimony each and every day and learning what we learned. It was unreal. We, 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 I mean, it was hard to believe what had happened, how this man's life had unraveled. A man who had so much between money, power, influence, a wife, children, helicopters that he used to take to, to games, going to the College World Series every year, going fishing trips with his buddies, all of that going on. And everybody loved Alec Murdoch down in the low country. That was then, this is now. Um, but before the trial of last year, he got arrested. And, and the first arrest wasn't for the murder. It, it was for um, misappropriating funds in the Gloria Satterfield case, his, his housekeeper who died at his home. And then Alec helped coordinate a lawsuit against himself, really the insurance company, and hooked it up with his buddy, got a settlement for millions, but didn't give any money to the Satterfield children, put it in his pocket, and his buddy put some in his pocket, you know, not giving money to the children who lost their mom at Murdoch's house. But he was getting arrested for that, and that body cam video has now been released, and we're going to take a look at it. It's not in South Carolina. He's at a drug rehab down in um, Orange County, Florida, down in the Orlando area, the site of another crime at another time that we are not going to talk about tonight. But we are going to take a look at this uh, video, Alec Murdoch. Pay attention, fascinating to watch and to listen, because this is before the world finds out all the details of what went on and how he murdered his wife and son. Let's take a look. Can I get some before I go? Can I keep my tobacco? Okay, I can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 To get them booked in in the out of county warrant. Oh, they're, they're just going to be coming down there with you so that they can uh, get their expedition away and take it from there. So. Hold on. Can I keep this? Uh, we'll, we'll hold that. We'll hold on to it. Yep. Yep. Let's shut them on the roof. All right, you turn around for me. You guys ready, Brett? Space, yes, sir. That's fine. All right. Call me to the patrol vehicle. You don't have anything, um, any kind of weapons to come to on you? I have some jacks here and some tobacco. All right. You can separate your feet. Um, turn your back in. Okay. It's probably easier to turn your back in like this. All right, thank it's you. It's probably pretty long. Yeah. Well, I, obviously the mm -hmm. And if you want to slide back, it's like I said, you're pretty long, and this is small. Oh, so sit long ways? Yeah. 
Yeah, okay, sit sideways or be left for you. You want to take his ID or no? Yeah, I'll take it. You feel the air? You want me to turn the air on? Um, not bad. Okay. He can take his wallet if he wants. Yeah, yeah, yeah he okay. can take that. Money, commissary? Yeah. yeah. All the scripts, you're not going to take that. Yeah. You want that to go back in his bag inside? Hey, Alec, I'm going to put this in your bag inside, okay? Or do you need that to go with you? Because the jail's not going to take it. They won't, they won't, let, they won't take, let me have those meds? No, sir. They keep them? No, sir. Um, most, most jails won't do, do that. We'll, sit, we'll keep those meds. Okay, you, you can just give it to them, then. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. All right. What do you want to mean? He said give it to them. Okay. The tongs? What? It's, it's in that, yes, sir. It's in that one here. It's not a pencil. Uh, it's not a pencil. He's, in, he's uh, in your custody right now. How you feel about that? Click on your phone. It's a uh, stomach medicine. I don't, I don't know how they feel about um, prescription medication. Yeah, well, I mean, he yeah, wants to take take one pill now. Oh, take one pill now? Yeah. Or, I, think I mean, yeah. he's coming it's out fine. of the uh, He's coming out of the facility. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's fine. Yeah. I just don't want to give him something while he's in your custody. No, so. it's fine. It's, it's the good. You want to scoop back out a little bit so you can take it? Yes, sir. Turn the AC up. Uh, uh, I'll turn it up a little bit. Okay, thank you, sir. You, want, you need me to roll the windows down, or that's fine. I'm okay. There's a lot to talk about in that video. I mean, first, uh, I think he needs a fanny pack for all the stuff that he had stuffed in his pockets. Number one, number two, once again wearing a Vinnie Vine shirt. It looks like, and number three, most notably. Um, He's got all the, he's outside of a drug rehab and he's got all these pills. And he takes one more pill, courtesy of the arresting officers. Now, all those black boxes, you have a bunch of undercover officers there. That's why um, their images are blocked out here. Uh, but you saw he took one more of his so called prescription pills as he's uh, being arrested outside of the drug rehab. Unbelievable. Let's bring in our think tank, see what they have to say about all this. Joining us tonight in Seattle, Washington, trial attorney and fellow of the American College of Trial Lawyers, Ann Bremner. Also with us tonight in West Palm Beach, Florida, state attorney for Palm Beach County, Dave Arenberg. And in Cleveland, Ohio, retired judge, former prosecutor in Cuyahoga County, Ohio, and judicial fellow at the National Judicial College, Judge Gail Byers. All right, everyone, great to see you. Uh, Ann Bremner, uh, after watching the arrest of Alec Murdoch, what is your takeaway from what we just saw? I thought there's a lot of Southern charm. They, treat, they treated him so well. I mean, they get the water bottle for him. You know, everything's like, I mean, like, roll down a window for you. Anything else, when you, like maybe roll out a red carpet as he goes into the jail. I mean, that's what struck me. But also, he looked like a referee with his shirt. I didn't know the name of the brand you mentioned, but... Um, I think it was Vinnie Vines. Bills. I think okay, it was Vinnie I'm Vines. Vines. Yeah. I've learned something new. For yeah. Sure. Vinnie Vines. Well, it, so, it, it's uh, Vineyard Vines, but in the trial, they called them Vinnie Vines. Um, oh, okay. okay. Dave Arenberg, are you 
what do you think it was a prescription pill in his prescription bottle? Yes, uh, Vinny, it's not uncommon to have prescription medicine and to have an addiction of tobacco even when you leave uh, a rehab. Here, uh, from what I have seen, it was a pill for irritable bowel syndrome, not to gross out anyone right now, but that <laughs> was what it was for. It wasn't for, uh, op it wasn't an opioid or anything like that. And as far as his shirt, yeah, he looks good in stripes, right? He's gonna have to get used to it for the rest <laughs> of his life. <laughs> I guess, I guess, Judge, if it is a pill for irritable bowel syndrome, I guess they're just trying to um, save the environment in the jail where he's going to go, right? Is that what's going on here? Well, well, you never can tell, Vinny, but what I would say is depending upon how long the ride is, the officer may very well want to make sure that the back seat has remained usable for the next <laughs> arrestee. And so it, it might make a lot of sense to make sure that he's medicated. But what would have probably been helpful in this instance, given that he was already at a facility, is you could have easily had someone from inside the facility come out and verify that not only was that his prescription, but that is it, that the pills in the bottle are exactly what it purports to be because everybody knows that it's not uncommon for pills to get mixed up even in a prescription bottle. And so the mere fact that he has his name on it or there's a name on it that's his and that there are pills in a bottle doesn't mean A, that those are his pills or B, that those are the pills that are supposed to be in the bottle. So an extra level of precaution might have been helpful here. Okay, now let's get to where he's being arrested, right? It's at a, a, a drug rehab. I remember when when I first learned of this and he was suspected in the in the double murder and there was that crazy roadside shooting as well that this was all like a ploy right to go, again garner sympathy uh, but the question is was he really a drug addict let's go back to the trial here's Alec Murdoch you can believe him if you want you don't have to testifying about his opioid use this battle that I had with addiction it had been going on for years you know some people talk about pain pills and how they make them lethargic and you know where they can't do anything opiates gave me energy 30 uh, milligram pills um, instant release oxycodone um, that will probably mixed in with some oxycontin so you're taking 60 a day or something like that I mean there I were days where I took more than that so, Ann Bremner, as we go back to this case and, and try to, you know, peel back the layers on how he ended up where he ended up, um, do you believe that it's because he had a drug problem, he needed money, so then he started stealing from his clients? Then all of the, the, his fraud was going to be exposed, so as a diversion to all of that, he attempted to turn himself into a victim uh, by having... Uh, his, his wife and son be the victims of murder so everyone would feel sorry for him, take the heat off of his financial fraud um, and perhaps the whole thing being fueled by this opioid addiction. Do you buy that chain of cause and effect in the life of Alec Murdoch? I never did, Vinny. I, I think he's once a con, always a con. I mean, he stole from his clients because he could and he's completely immoral. I mean, this whole thing, I mean, there are two things he wanted to be seen as a victim on, of course, was this whole drug addiction, because we all say, well, it's really hard to help, or, you know, you yourself if you're an addict. But the second thing that was really compelling to me was he wanted to look like a victim, and he killed his wife and his son, to look like a victim so that he could thwart the upcoming hearing on his finances in the boat case, the Mallory Beach case. I think he's just a horrible person through and through, but at the drugs, he's just kind of masked what a creep he is by saying he was an addict, so there's some kind of victim mentality there but also with this public sentiment people would feel so bad for him that his wife and his son were killed and that's why he did it so the, the surviving member of his family uh, buster the only one who's not dead or in prison uh testified about his dad's addiction let's take a listen were you aware that your dad had a um opioid addiction uh a little bit i knew a little bit about the usage of pills. What did you know about it? I knew that I knew that either my brother and mom had found them at some point, and then you know told them like, "Hey, we found these." And he, 
I want to say the 2018 around Christmas, he went to a, a detox facility after Christmas. And that was my knowledge of it, thought that that handled it. And then there were a couple more times after, after the fact where they would kind of go into this finding pills, all that stuff. And then he, he did a few, he did a few kind of like at home, just self detoxed a couple times and, you know, thought, you know, once he did that, that, you know, get off of him. But that, that was kind of my general knowledge about it all. You, you thought he he had beat it. That's right. Yes, sir. Dave Arenberg, what are, what are your thoughts about the life of Alec Murdoch, and and was it the drugs that led led to this domino effect and this downfall? Well, normally opioids depress you. It's not a stimulant, but for him, it made him energetic and powerful, and I think that helped explain why he committed such a horrific crime. Now, I do think it was to take the heat off him, to make him sympathetic, to cancel the hearing that was coming up uh, financially that would have hurt him. Also, I think he really resented Paul, Paul, Paul Paul, as he called him, because he got him in so much trouble financially. So all those things combined. Uh, but yeah, the opioids, I do believe he had an addiction, but I don't believe, because he is a professional liar, that he took 60, 30 milligram pills a day. That would kill you. That, that's just not conceivable. Yeah, I agree. I agree.